Okay, so let's start off by looking at the basic movements of the curve. So we may have done this already, but let's do this again. So we've talked about monetary policy. Monetary policy has everything to do with the interest rate. So let me draw the LM curve and we have the ice curve as well. And now what can the monetary policy do? An expansionary monetary policy uh, right here, an expansionary monetary policy is going to reduce the interest rate. And as a result, the money supply is going to increase. So what we have is let's say this. So interest rate has gone down. If interest rate goes down, we've talked about this before, what we are also going to see is that output has increased. So an expansionary monetary policy would seem like a very good thing because it's leading to greater output in the economy. So of course, you guys understand the converse is also true if the government were to increase the interest rate, we would end up at this point and output is falling. And once again, without thinking too much, that would seem to be a bad thing that output is falling. So the question is, why don't the government constantly use expansionary monetary policy? Because if you undertake an expansionary monetary policy, output is increasing, which is good for the economy, good for the people. So why don't we just constantly undertake this policy? That's because of, remember, the liquidity trap. If interest rate is too low, it, it becomes incapable of affecting the economy. And the lower the interest rate, the weaker the effect of monetary policy will be. And so that's why you don't want to use monetary policy too often. You may sort of, you know, uh, reduce its effectiveness. Okay, similarly, let's take a look now at the fiscal policy. So I, we have LM here. We have eyes here. And now let's talk about fiscal policy. So fiscal policy has everything to do with G and T. And we've already seen this before. If G increases or if T falls, what happens? The ice curve shifts to the right. If you don't remember why, take a look at our previous lecture where we have talked about this. And the opposite is also true. If taxation were to increase, or if government expenditure were to fall, the ice curve will shift to the left. So let's call this ice prime prime. So what we see is that if we are initially at this point, an expansionary fiscal policy would seem to increase our output. And a contractionary fiscal policy would seem to decrease our output. So once again, the same question is that if undertaking expansionary fiscal policy is increasing our output, why don't we constantly do this? Why aren't we just imposing one after another fiscal expansion? And the question is the way of making fiscal expansion happen is by a, lowering tax, and B, increasing government expenditure. Now, as you do this, you're lowering tax, your revenue is falling, but you're also spending more as, as a government. Your expenditure is going up. What will that lead to? That will lead to a budget deficit. And you can't indefinitely increase your deficit. You can't constantly spend more than you earn. You can do it for a, for a short period of time, but sooner or later, this policy is going to be no longer possible because budget deficit means you're borrowing from other people and you have to pay this money back sooner or later. As a government, you're either borrowing money from your own people or you're borrowing from 
other countries and sooner or later this money has to be paid back and when it has to be paid back you can no longer undertake fiscal expansion and so once again for both this case and this case what we see is that expansionary policies on the surface seem like they're good for the economy but they can only be uh, implemented on a limited scale if we try to do too much it becomes bad for the economy so now that we understand the basic shifts of the curve the lm and the ice curve now we can look at some more serious policy implications